Hey everyone, welcome back. This is our second last session of the day, man. I can't believe this. We are past the halfway point. Um, we've already learned so much. I've been taking notes all day and I'm super excited for this one. So welcome to Asana Automations, Mastering Rules for Optimal Workflow. And so we have Nadia Martinez here. Uh, Nadia's on our team at MMG. And Nadia and I met probably just shy of a year ago now. And I always tell this story and then she laughs like it's not true, but we met for the first time and um, we're just going back and forth on just our experience with the sauna and what it looked like as we were delivering for our customers. And she was showing me things that I never knew about uh, Asana. And so um, I'm always learning and um, it was incredible that I was able to learn from her and um, She's just an incredible uh, person and just the way that she thinks and approaches process and approaches Asana, um, it's unlike anyone else. And so I'm excited for you to hear and learn from her today. Just a few housekeeping things. Um, if, you're, if you've been with us all day, then you've already heard this spiel. If you're hopping in for the first time, um, we've got some ways that you can connect with us. And so in the right-hand side, you will see that there is a dashboard. And so you can leave comments in the chat. So as we're getting started, I'd love to know, where are you from? Uh, what city, what location, what brought you here, and what are you hoping to get out of the day today? We're talking about rules and automation, something that um, when I talk to our customers about this, it often like their, their eyes just glaze over. And so love to know what you're hoping to get out of this session, where you're located, let us know. And then if there is a specific question that you have, there is a QA, there are little speech bubbles below the, the live chat. Um, ask your question there because throughout the presentation, we'll be bringing those questions on the screen or at the end, we'll be bringing those questions up. So if you have a question, throw it in there. Um, and then if you are reading through the questions, you can upvote those questions as well if you have the same one. And so... Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is participation. We're looking to have a great interactive session today, and we've had so much incredible engagement all day. And I'm not sure if you you knew this, so you're just genuinely, genuinely um, loving the content. But every time you raise your hand, or leave a comment, or put an emoji up, or you know, check out the sponsor links in the lounge area, you get points. And so we have a leaderboard going all day. Um, and we, uh, Jacob is still holding that top spot at 535 points. Then we have Lori took the second place spot and then, um, Murray is in the third place spot. And so our winners today will get, um, custom Asana templates. Um, the first place, um, role or position, sorry, we'll get a 60 minute consultation with myself as well. So make sure we're engaging as well. And if there's anything that goes wrong technically today in the bottom right, there is a purple question mark where the AirMeet team, that's a platform we're on today, will be able to help you with your technical uh, questions. And so let's just go back to the, the feed here. Let's see. We've got some people from Fresno, California, Newfoundland. All right. We've got some East Coasters. Um, Birmingham, Alabama. Um, we got, um, oh, we got Bestian's link. It made it over here. Great. Who else? We got Los Angeles. I'm looking to learn more to save time and work as efficiently as possible. Um, there we go. St. Paul, Minnesota, Poland, Poland to Poland. Wow. Guelph, Ontario. All right. Um, looking to expand my understanding of what Asana can do. We got North Texas, Yonkers, lots of Texas. Awesome. So um, we're, we're international today, as you can see, coming from all walks of life, um, have different use cases, different industries, but Asanathon is bringing us together. So we're so glad that you're here. And uh, without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Nadia to uh, take, away, um, take it away for our presentation today. Awesome. Thanks, Marquis. Give me one second here while I get my screen sharing. Uh, hello, everyone. Happy Wednesday. I hope everyone's doing well. Um, so my name's Nani Martinez. Um, like Marquis said, I support him on his MMG team. So I am actually one of the Asana specialists that help with a lot of the build outs that um, our team particularly gets. So I'm super excited about this session. The session is going to be very hands on. Um, I am going to start to explain like what automations are, things of that nature. 
Um, I do want you all to kind of throw out any ideas that you have while we're um, kind of going through today's session. Um, but before we do get started with what I wanted to kind of talk about, um, first things first, I just want to talk a little bit about me. Like I mentioned, I am an Asana specialist. I am also a trainer. I've been training for, at this point, six, seven years. Um, so you'll see in my session today when we actually do the build out, kind of where that passion comes of being hands-on. Um, I am very... I'm focused on making sure that I cover all individuals with regards to, you know, whether you're hands on, you're a reader, things of that nature. But my biggest passion is just helping individuals and team optimize productivity um, and workflows. Um, so like Marquis said, I really like to think outside the box. I am a firm believer of working smarter, not harder. Um, so one of my biggest things when I started my own consulting you know, business was, I wanted to really just learn what people's visions were, and then try to get them from point A to point Z, in a most seamless, effective way. Um, so we'll talk about how that kind of ties into automations. And then, you know, we'll talk a little bit more about how it became a love of, of mine. Um, I've also been about a project manager for about 10 years now. Um, project management varies, but I love what I do. I took that niche and just started turning it into an automation and workflow um, build out specialist. But again, they go hand in hand. And um, just some fun facts. I am a dog mom. I have a nine pound Yorkie pug. Um, he is a Yorkie pug. He's 10 pounds and he is literally seven years old. People think he's a baby. Um, and then I ordered sushi today for lunch because I love sushi. So I just wanted to kind of throw that in there because I thought it would be fun. Um, but let's get started with today's topic as far as um, the agenda, right? I just kind of want to talk about what we're going to be doing. Um, and then I want to, we'll go into like the live demo portion after we talk about certain things. So I want to talk about what is an automation. I feel like it's important to understand at least what an automation is. Um, a lot of people get nervous with automations because they really don't understand how it works, right? So if you understand how it works, how it functions, you can kind of tackle an automation um, a lot easier and then kind of work automations into your workflows. And that'll pretty much be the goal here for today. Um, I also want to talk about why you should use automations. I know a lot of you are probably here because it's like, hey, automations are important for us to streamline processes. And that is so important. Um, but we'll talk about that a little bit further. I also want to explain how it works with regards to rules. So automation and rule go hand in hand. They're pretty much the same. Um, interchangeable language. But the rule is pretty much like the formula or what makes things happen. So we'll talk about the rule formula definition. Um, I will also show you some things I pulled from Asana on things you can automate. This is super high level. I think it only had seven. There are so many other things we can automate and we'll go through that as we kind of play around with automations because Asana gives you flexibility to, to use pre-built automations that they already have mapped out, which is super helpful for beginners. Um, and then they have the um, opportunity to allow you to kind of build custom, really robust automations, depending on what you're looking for. Um, and then again, the second kind of half of um, my talk here is really just going to be hands-on. So we'll do live automation build outs. Um, I pulled together some of my favorites automation build out. So what I essentially did is I made a fake project <laughs> and then I didn't have, there's nothing on it other than some tasks. Um, but what I want to do here today is just show you all how automations work and then show you live what they kind of look like, because I feel like that's going to be super helpful with you all taking what you learned here today and moving forward. Um, another great thing is you all just, if you all attended the last session, the last session was about custom fields. So now you'll kind of learn how custom fields go hand in hand with automations. And this should kind of give you a full circle of, again, how to get that workflow to be seamless. So let's talk about um, what is an automation? Um, what do you all think an automation is? What do you know about an automation? Oop. And I don't think I can see the chat, but I'm going to try to find a way I can because I would love to see some of your answers. I pulled what Asana gave me, but I would love to see what else you all have. I put in there magic. Um, someone else said triggers. Chris says moving tasks to different sections based
Did I lose you all? Oh. So I can read it out um, to you, um, Nadia. So a lot of people said magic, triggers, um, moving tasks to different sections based on a field value, makes your life easier, um, time savers, triggers to update tasks, a rule that automatically populates tasks, workflows happening without a person clicking anything. So yeah. Awesome. Sorry, I think my internet cut out then. My apologies. So yes, it was all of that too. are really great answers. Oh yeah, because I was like, where did Marquis go? So weird. Um, but <laughs> it happens. Um, so yes, all of that is things, right? Like any, all of those things fall under automations and rules. So this is what I pulled from Asana because I feel like it's always nice to have the source of truth. But rules in Asana help you automate common steps in your projects and processes. Right. So someone mentioned that um, rules also help you automate routine work. Right. Associated with task intake, um, routing. Someone mentioned tasks going to another section and so much more. So we'll be able to talk about that um, as well as we go through the automations. And then the beautiful thing about an automation is once it's built and it's on, that's it. You don't have to go back and make any changes or verify that it's working. So long as it meets the criteria that the automation requires, you don't ever have to touch it again. So when we're talking about working smarter, not harder, having your teams have the ability to automate the work that might be tedious to them, that's where the automation really comes into play. Okay, now let's talk about the rule formula. Right. Because when you have traditional rules, right, um, it's always that if then statement. Right. So if X happens, then you do Y. So when you think about the common rule formula, if X happens, then Y, Asana is similar in that regard. Right. So Asana has the rule um, triggers and actions. So essentially, it says if something meets this trigger criteria, then the action is to automate something else. And that's so important because if you at least understand this concept of the if and then triggers and actions, you'll be able to make an automation pretty much out of anything. Like I remember when I first started in Asana, I was only using the pre-made ones because I was like, oh, this is great. And then I started like trying to make sales pipelines or intake processes. And I just felt like, okay, well, I need a little extra something, right? And so once I started branching out and understanding the concept of it, and then I started playing with the custom rule builder, um, it just made things a lot easier with regards to assisting my clients to help their teams be more efficient. Um, I mentioned earlier that I wanted to talk about some things that you can automate. Um, definitely throw some things in the chat that you all know that you can automate aside from what we've done, anything else. But we can automate tasks to go from um, new tasks to go to a correct project. So like, let's say you have a main intake project board. And I talked about this in the panel that um, we were in this morning, but I love webbing projects out, right? So if an intake process comes in to one board, but let's say it is related to my um, HR team. I could then automate it to go to that other team's project. And then that only that team will be able to see that work, right? I can use a automation to assign work to the right teammate. So let's say you have a really tight knit team and let's say you only have one design person. You can create an automation that when a task is ready to go to design, that it always goes to that person. Um, you can, create automations to set due dates. So like, let's say that um, you give yourself 24 hours to respond to a ticket, right? And you're using Asana as a ticketing system. You can set an automation that as soon as the ticket gets submitted from someone, maybe using an Asana form or something of that nature, that there's an automation that sets the due date for a day out, two days out, plenty of things that you can do. Um, and then the beautiful thing about the automations is you can hand off work at the right time. So if things go into a certain funnel and flow, you can keep the team informed throughout the process. So definitely some benefits there when it when we're talking about things that you can automate with regards to, you know, the automations and rules. Um, so now I really just want to spend this time kind of building some automations here. Again, I have some favorites. Um, 
I'm going to take some time and kind of go through a few because what I want to do is kind of go through some basic, um, some of what I consider intermediate, and then some that I might be considered advanced. Um, also, anything that I might see in the chat as it kind of comes through, I would love to as well. Um, and then after that, we can just kind of talk about it all. Give me one second here. Let me switch from this to my other screen so I can actually get us into a sauna. All right, and then go back here. Sharing screen is so fun. Okay. All right, so everyone should see my screen here. I'm gonna just minimize this a little bit so I can use this dually. All right, awesome. So I started us with a really kind of basic project. I didn't add too much to it at all. Um, in this project, I just created some tasks. I have the assignee column, the due date column. I pulled over Asana's pre-task um, uh, progress kind of column. And then I also pulled over Asana's priority column because I want to play around with that as well. Um, so let's do something here. So what I, let's start. So let's start with our first automation. So first things first, to get to the automations in Asana, you're going to click customize. And then you're going to either click on rules or you can scroll down, whatever your preference is. And then here I'm going to click add a rule. Now, before I get into making um, any kind of automations, I really want to just kind of show you all what Asana has, because this is overwhelming to some people, but at least this way, if you kind of understand what they're giving you, you can kind of understand how you can create custom more and so on and so forth. So Asana is always going to recommend you something, which is beautiful. It gives you the opportunity to not have to really think too much about what you need to do. You just kind of have to read what you're trying to do. So the way that these are all broken out is this is the trigger, which is the first part. So this is the if, and then after the arrow is always the action. That's the then. Okay, so some of the top ones that they'll usually do is if a task is added to this project, you can add collaborators. So if you wanted to, let's say that your stakeholders always want to be informed when something gets added to an intake process, you can go here, click into it, it pre-builds what you need. All you need to do is fill out the extra work. So then I can just go here and say, when a task is added to this project, add me as a collaborator create the rule. You see the rule here is active. You'll also see it here saying that it's active. And then at that point, that rule will now run. So if a new task gets added, I will be added as a collaborator. Okay. Um, some other ones here you'll have is task is added to this project. You can create subtask. Um, if the due date is approaching, you can have that task move to a certain section. Um, this one is really great for your my task. If you have um, a section in your My Task that is like due today or upcoming, um, I love a good, if the due date is approaching, right? If it's due today or due one day before, move it to a section. You can always move it to that upcoming or due kind of section. So definitely a really nice one when it comes to your My Task. Um, you have routing um, automations, right? So these ones are either um, moving them to sections, updating task progress, things of that nature will fall under routing. Um, you have the agile section. So when task progress is being set, you can get tasks being completed or um, task having to be set to an assignee. Um, that's one of the automations I will be building because I love that. Um, Asana also integrates <clears throat> with um, some of your um, apps. So right here, you can integrate it through Slack, Teams, Gmail, the Google Calendar, so on and so forth. Um, and I saw someone in the chat asking if you can add rules to your My Task, and yes, you can. So I can also show that here. Um, I can do that after I play around with this project because that'll also be something helpful. But yeah, pretty much you can add automations anywhere in Asana, what automations you can do kind of vary in your My Task a little bit, but not much. Um, okay, so now that we've kind of ran through all of that high level, let's talk about some basic automations. So a lot of the things that I see when it comes down to Asana is 
this done thing, right? Like, have you ever had a project where you mark a task as done because the work is completed, but it doesn't move, the task doesn't be, it's not marked completed, it just kind of sits in limbo. And then you manually have to move it to the right section and then mar uh, mark it complete. That is so tedious, right? It just takes so much work to have to do that. Well, you can automate that process. So one of my favorite automations and one I would recommend putting on every single project that you have is you're going to find, and so when you're in here, actually, before we go in there too deep, let's talk about some of the different pieces here because this could get a lot too. So once you're actually in a rule, you have the trigger and then you have the action. So the triggers are, you can either task move to another section or a project. You can do the task field is assigned to, you can do the due dates like we mentioned. Um, you can task status change. So you can mark it completed, which we'll do here in a second. Approval, things like that. Um, you can also update that custom field dropdowns, which will also create one of those. And then also add comments and things like that. So a lot of flexibility here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say if a task is marked complete, and then also um, another option Asana has is you can do task and subtask only. So here you can say, I just want it to do the parent task. I want it to just do all subtask. If you want something to run on task and subtask right here, Asana dropped this feature a couple months back. You can say, hey, I want this automation to run on all task and all subtask. I think I saw that in the chat too. So at least this way you can have flexibility, right? Some individuals want all subtasks to live under the parent task and forever, right? And then once the parent task gets completed, the parent task moves, but some people would want subtasks to be moved away from the parent task when it gets marked completed. Um, you have ability to customize that here. So I'm gonna say when a task is, ooh, we're not gonna do this one. We're gonna say when a task progress is changed, Okay, to done, because this is where you want to really utilize those custom fields, because this is going to help you with streamlining work, right? So I want to tell Asana that this, the moment this gets changed to done, that it gets marked completed, right? Now, I set up half of the rule, but I didn't set up the other half. So essentially, what's going to happen here is I mark this as done, and then Asana saves me a step. And then it is then going to mark this task for me as completed. And now you'll see that task is completed. Okay. Now let's take this automation a step further. Because this is a simple one, but this one always is like a two-parter. So yes, I want when the task progress is set to done to complete it. But I also want to get it out of that section. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to say move to section. And I'm going to click complete it. And so now when I go in and reset it, like I just did, and I press done, it's now going to complete the task like it just did, but then it's also gonna move it to that section. Do you see that? Now you all will know that sections have rules because you'll see this lightning bolt next to them. All of these other sections don't have any automations because there's no lightning bolt next to them, okay? So aside from this task being marked completed and being marked done, um, let's do another automation and I'm going to create this automation. Um, and then we're going to change the task status. So we're going to do this one as, um, same kind of thing. We're going to say if task status is set to, um, deferred, which essentially is going to be blocked. I'm going to move it to the blocked section. And then let's say that I also want to change the priority, right? Because now that it's blocked, it becomes a low priority. There's nothing that we can do for it. So now this is gonna update, not only moving it to the section for me, but then it's also gonna change that priority that I have up there and it's gonna set it to low, okay? So we'll go here. We'll change this one to deferred. And then you'll see here that this task went to blocked. The status is deferred. And then the priority just went to low. Okay. All right. 
So let's see here. So those were two of the automations that I really kind of consider um, like basic in a sense. Um, let's test on something a little bit more fun. So what I did on this particular project is I made a form. Um, I made a very simple form. It's It has like two questions. But what I want to do is I want to get a little bit technical, right? Because sometimes if you all um, use Asana's intake kind of forms, you have an option to choose like what form it comes from, whether it comes from like a form or a task. So what we're going to do here is, is I'm going to create an, another automation. But this time what we're going to do is we are going to, um, where is, we're gonna say if a task is added to this project, and instead of saying all tasks, I'm gonna click on form submissions because now I want this automation to only trigger from this form that I have on this project and this project only has one. So I'm gonna say if it gets added to this project from that, I wanna change the task progress to not started and let's say the priority to high. Okay. And then another thing you can do is here, this is helpful, especially when you have projects that end up having like a lot of automations. Um, in Asana, each project limits you to about 50 automations per board. So you definitely wanna be very strategic in the automations that you're using. If an automation can cover multiple outcomes, then what you really wanna do is try to put as much as you can in that one so that you don't have all these automations doing one-offs. That's another thing that I see happen with a lot of individuals is they just want to go into a task and do, you know, go into an automation and do one at a time. If this is always going to be the same two to five things that happen, put them all in one task so you have that. And then this one, we're going to say, I'm going to label this new task. And then I'm going to say task, um, task progress to not started for me and then priority high. And at least this way, you'll see why this matters in a second. When you hi highlight, like hover over it, you see how it now has the new task and task progress. If I hover over them, you can see what the title of the task is. At least this way, you have um, the ability to see at high level of what it does. So now let's play around with this form. So we're just going to put my name and then my favorite color is purple. And fun fact, purple is one of the hardest colors to see by the human eye, but yellow is easiest. I learned that the other day. <laughs> so now you see my submission's been received. So I'm gonna go in here. <clears throat> You'll see that this task came up here, okay? And it's because I forgot to add in the automation that a new request goes into this section, but you see how these other two options populated here. Um, so you'll have task progress has not started and then priority is high. So if I was to go and fix that automation and I said, move it to section, new request and add it in yet another action, right? Then here, if I reset one of these criteria, it will then trigger um, that it would trigger the automation and move it to that section, okay? Um, so let's talk about some fun ones when we're talking about like co-collaborating with your team members, right? Um, let's say that when a task goes into um, in progress, right? So we're ready to go into in progress and we're going to do it by, my apologies, the task to progress. This is the one piece I always have to remember. We're going to move it to in progress. Um, but what do we want to do here? Let's, let's do two parts. Let's assign it to me. Let's um, create a subtask um, to please, uh, what we want to say, submit invoice. And then we're going to set this for like, let's say two days out. And then we'll also assign the subtask to me. So you see here, you can really get technical with the Asana automations too. Like every time this task goes into in progress, I can set the parent task to me and I can also create a subtask that says, hey, when this task goes into in progress, you need to submit your invoice and I can also trigger that information to come to me as well. Um, and then let's create this one. And then we know that the automation is working. We see the little arrow. 
we're going to go here. We're going to click in progress. And then now we're in progress. And then does everybody see this little subtask bubble? If I was to click this, now you see the subtask invoice. And the beautiful thing is it sets it for two days out, which is Friday. So now I have the parent task I'm responsible for, but then I also have the subtask to help me manage and, and co-collaborate on my work, right? Like making sure that I'm keeping track of the things I need to do. Um, let's say, let's see here. What are some automations that you all want to see? Because I have plenty, but let's see. Now, the only thing about automations is it's very hard if you have multiple let's see let me talk about this as well because this one's this is really important when it talk when you're thinking about automations when you add more than one trigger right so let's say that this task is in progress um and let's say that the um assignee is a key Let's say that we want to change the priority to high, okay? Now, you see this little kind of filter thing here? The only thing about the automations is when you're talking about this top piece, you have two options. You're either going to do the sugar when all of the criteria happens or any. So let's talk about that briefly. When we say all the triggers happen, that means that anytime you want this to run, both of or any of everything needs to meet. So that means that unless this task is in that section in progress and is assigned to Marquee, it is not going to trigger because it requires both of that criteria to push along, right? Whereas if I said any of these triggers happen, then it's an or. Right now, this one is a little tricky to use when you're talking about like using it against task status, right? Like doing the drop down, because the problem with the any is like, let any time this, this happens, it's always going to work. So what that means is anytime a task is assigned to marquee, regardless if it's in the section, it is always going to set that priority to high. Okay. Um, so let's, let's see how it works. So I'm going to set this one as this. So this one says all of the triggers need to happen. So this task needs to be an in progress and get assigned to marquee for this priority to be set high. So I'm going to create that. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this task away from myself to marquee because I have my subtask now to send the invoice. So now he's going to be responsible for this task. And now you see how this task hit that high priority. That's because it met the criteria. It lives in in progress and it's assigned to Marquis. Now to see it the other way, if I was to go in here and I change this to any, you're going to see two things happen. You're going to see when I move this task that says Nadia Martinez purple, when I move it to in progress, you're going to see that it is going to set the priority as high. And then you're also going to see that when I set that other task, to marquee that it is then going to also set that um, priority status to high because again it meets the any criteria so if i go here and then i say task status is in progress you see it sets it to high and then if i assign this one to marquee then it's going to go into that and then it's also going to set a high because I didn't set the task status. I set the assignee. Okay. Hey, Nadia. Yeah. There are lots of upvotes for one specific request. I'm curious. Um, Hassan says waiting on dynamic variables in rules, any clue when we can expect those. Now I know that there are variables that are rolled out in like the comments and you can add different things. Are you able to touch on that a little bit so we can see what variables look like? Yeah, for sure. Um, let me go back here. And what are we specifically trying to see? Just 
Um, let's just do one where in comments? the comments maybe we can, you know, mention the person that, you know, triggered the, the rule. Oh, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. So let's say we'll move this toss to blocked. And then we'll say, uh, let's go here. So I'm going to click um, add to comment. So a task gets moved to block. We're going to go here. Now, the cool thing with Asana is if you want it to be a standard comment, you just do it. This task is blocked, right? But if you do this, this isn't going to talk to anybody. Um, it will notify the assignee because any, all assignees get notified on tasks, like updates, comments, things of that nature in their inbox. But nobody's really going to get notified, like, specifically. Um, so here in Asana, you have, once you click into the box, you have a variable kind of option here. This is awesome because if you have things that you want to happen, you can do that information here. So let's say that you wanted to add a person, right? You can add now the task creator. So essentially the person that created the task. Um, you can do the assignee of the task. So whoever is the assignee of the task, regardless if they created it or not, can get assigned. Or if it's the person that triggered the automation, okay? Now, when you click into the variable, you do have the option to choose how they get triggered. It's usually just easy to do default because this is essentially going to add them by the, what they go by in Asana versus name, email, or ID, those get really tricky. So I would just leave it as default. So if I go here and say default rule trigger, this is gonna notify me because I'm gonna be the one that's gonna trigger the rule, okay? Um, aside from the people piece, you also have dates. So you can create a variable that, that is like, hey, this um, gets triggered at the time the rule is triggered. Um, at the start date of when the trigger is in the task, um, the due date of the trigger task, or when the um, trigger task was created. So definitely some variable there you can choose. Um, let me take that one off, just so I have the other ones. Uh, let's see what else we have. We also have custom fields. So in this one, you can do task progress, um, and then priority, because these are only the custom fields that I have on this particular project. And then add a task, same thing. You can add a task to default it to the person. So if I go here and I say, hey, if it goes to blocked, task is blocked and tag the rule triggerer, let me also, we're gonna double duty this, right? Because what I also wanna do is I also wanna let the assignee of the task know that this task is blocked. But then I just want the rule trigger to be notified that the main person has been let known. Does that make sense? Because essentially the rule triggerer knows <laughs> that it is blocked because they updated it. But the person that's working that task needs to be notified. So this one, I have two pieces in it. So I'm going to be tagged in this one twice. So if I go, oh, I'll leave it as Marquis, actually. He will be tagged in it once. So let's go deferred. And then now do you see the little bubble? So these are always subtasks and then these are always comments. So if I open this task up, <laughs> excuse me, click in the details and I scroll down, you'll see here that Marquis was notified because he was the owner of this task, that this task is blocked. And then I was notified just as good measure. Okay, so you have that one here. Um, let's see. What other variables can we play around with? Let me go back in here. Um, we can do attachments as well. Oh, Marquis back. <laughs> no, I just want to let you know we have lots more questions if you do want to take them. So, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, there was another one that was uh, upvoted quite a bit. Um, it's a two parter. What do you think is the okay. future of rules? And are there any things that uh, most people miss when using Asana rules that you haven't covered? Oh, good question. So what do you think is the future of rules? Honestly, in my opinion, the future of rules is just to help your teams like be more efficient and have like the ability to focus more on the work that they're doing than managing the work, right? Like, 
when you have to manually keep track of where your tasks are going, making sure that they're going to the right people, that is so overwhelming, especially if you're working in a sauna all the time, like you should be. It's one of those things that, um, you know, it's just going to help your teams be more efficient. It's not going to get rid of all of the work completely, but it'll allow it to move more seamlessly. Um, the second part was that any simple things that most people miss when using rules? Um, I think the biggest thing about rules is like, you don't know what you don't know, right? And I think sometimes people get so um, concerned about, okay, hey, it needs to do all of these things that they, they focus so much on every single thing instead of each piece of it. Um, so I think people just miss kind of just understanding the, um, just finding the information. Like when I first started using rules, I knew absolutely nothing about it, but I was in Asana forums. I was playing around in my own Asana instance that I ended up paying for just to kind of learn it, you know, and here I am a few years later and I can pretty much make anything out of Asana, but I didn't know what I didn't know then that I do now. What other question do we have? Uh, There's another one. This is uh, another two-parter. Um, for managing salespeople, would you recommend form automations for end-of-day reports on their progress? And then number two is when tracking deal statuses per seller, can you use automations to update the, the pipeline stages? Okay. Uh, so let's start with the first part. So managing salespeople. Um, forms are a beautiful way to track, um, end of day, like reports. Like I've, I've seen people use an Asana form to your point, kind of as a time tracker. Um, I think it just varies on, on how you want to use that. Right. If that form is a lot of extra work, cause they're already, if they're already managing it somewhere else, and then you want them to manage a form as well, that can be a lot. Um, but if you're not managing their time or what they're doing, then yes, a form is a great way to do that. Um, some custom fields and automations that you can do off of that, you can do like um, a custom field that um, specifies what type of work it is. So if you're managing salespeople, if you break their work down, project management, execution, things of that nature, you can have um, that be it, but just know if you add that, they'd have to be separate forms. And then once it comes into like um, the Asana board from a form, you can say, hey, mark this task as, you know, in review or something of that nature. So your team knows to review it if that's something that you're looking to do to keep track of um, managing your team. And then you said when tracking deal status per seller, can you use automations to update the pipeline stages? If I'm up understanding what you're asking um, on the second part, Katie, like let's say that kind of how I just shared on my screen, right? A deal pipeline, you have new deal. Um, pending, you know, bid submitted, won, lost, things of that nature, absolutely. You can use automations to do it. What you'll do is you'll create a custom field that has whatever your company's um, pipeline um, words are or, or like titles, whatever you all use, you'll create that custom field first and then you'll go in and create an automation per section. So you'll say when a task is added, it's a new deal. When a task status is changed to in progress, move it to in progress. When it is one, move it to one. If it's lost, lost, so on and so forth. But absolutely, you can definitely track deals um, using the automations and rules easily. Awesome. Um, do you have more, Nadia? Or do you want to get back to the demo? Or do you want to keep going with questions? We got lots. It's up to you. Oh, yeah, let's do the questions. We can yeah, do okay, questions cool. and end the demo. Yeah, for sure. I love okay, this. Cool. I'm, I'm <laughs> let's do this one then. Uh, is there a way to integrate Asana with Gmail in a way tasks get created automatically when receiving emails from a specific address? I think that is a little tricky. Um, now you can do when a task in Asana is created to send an email to a specific email address. Um, but when you're talking about integrating Asana and Gmail that like when you get an email, it 
like if you get an, well, I guess I need to understand the question better. Marquis, are you thinking this one is about um, sending an email, like importing a task through the email? Yeah, this, I, I guess if they're receiving um, weekly emails from like the same sender, can they automatically get sent into a sauna um, oh, yeah. and create it as a task? Yeah. Um, can you pull this question down and I can actually um, share sure. my screen on this one? Yeah. Okay. Window. All right. Perfect. Can you all still hear me? Awesome. Okay. Yes. So what you'll do here is when you're in a project and someone said that every project has like an email address and yes. So you'll go drop down into the project and then you'll go here to import and then you'll click email. And then what will happen is you'll get this email and then this tells you how to build the email. So this says that this is gonna be the sender. So I'm gonna send it there. And then the subject of the email is gonna be the task name. The body will fall in the description. Um, all email attachments will be attached to the task. And then you can also CC people and add them as collaborators. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna copy this. I should be able to make this happen. Um, give me one second, I'm gonna do this on my other screen just to make it easier. So you all can at least see the task come in. Actually, let's do it here because we need to see the email. Okay, so we're going to send it to this. I'm going to say creating this task. We are going to delete all this. We're going to say, hello, this is a new task. And then I am going to, actually, let's do something fun. Let's add an attachment. We're going to add this attachment. Hopefully it attaches. I save screensavers on my computer for every month. <laughs> if anyone wants one, it's she does them every single month. But I think I need to do this as an actual, let me do it this way. Make sure it attaches August. And then we will download it. We're gonna press send. And then let's go back. Now, the thing about sending an email in your Asana instance is it has to be from the correct domain. So if it's not from the, like you're saying email domain, um, it will kick it out and usually you'll get a bounce back email. So hopefully it doesn't bounce back on me. And then you see, so that email that I just sent, it takes a second, but don't be alarmed. It doesn't take too long. It comes in as a new task. And then if I go in here, this is the body of it. So what I put in there, it still got my signature. And then it attached all of the attachments because I had all of these in my signature, but it also attached the one image that I wanted it to attach in there as well. So this is great when you're talking about, like, let's say someone sent you an email and maybe you want to forward it along or you want to take that email, edit it. Again, you'll just go here to this drop down. You'll import uh, email and then you'll do it that way. Um, also, while we're here, if anyone ever wanted to know that you can, like, wanted to find how you can import a CSV, this is also where you'll find it. So essentially, you want to put task into a project, you go here. And then if you want to take task out of a project to see it in a CSV, you can also do it this way. Um, what other questions for things we can build out? Um, someone was asking, can you create tasks from task templates via rules? All right. So let me create a task template. Uh, actually, let's just make this one a task template. Let's test. So to create a task template, you have to have your task of what you want, right? You'll click this three dots inside of the task details, and then you'll convert it to a task template that task will then get marked like kind of hollowed out, but then now you'll see that it's converted to template. So then let's go into rules and let's see what we can make happen. So let's say that if a task is added to this project, we want to create a task. Uh, let's see here, using 
Where did it go? Hmm. Move to section. Convert task to project. I, that's actually a good question. I'm not 100% sure you could do that. Because the way that you typically do it, like when you're in a task template, you would just click here. And if that task template lives here, you just click it. And um, I would assume that this isn't something that is available because when you do an automation, the automation is already on a parent task. When you use a task template, you're creating a brand new parent task versus a subtask. So to answer your question, no, at this time, I don't think Asana allows that capability. I'm going to bring this one up on here because I think it's relevant <clears throat> to what you just answered, right? Like, do you anticipate any future updates that will allow for more complex rule triggers? Example, if this and that or other all within a single rule. So I think like that makes me think about what you just showed, right? Like when a task or when this is selected or this is submitted, create a task from a task template, right? Like, so what are your thoughts on, I guess, the future of of rules inside of Asana, will we see more complex rule triggers in the future? I hope so. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I think the biggest thing about Asana is they hear us. I have put so many thoughts and things out there in the Asana form chats that they have. Like I was harping on the ability to use like the adding and subtracting like custom fields for a long time because that was some things a lot of people want to see, right? Like numbers, like if you're using Asana, you want to see that. Um, I, I Like I said, I hope so. Um, I think it would be a real benefit for them to do that because I even struggle with that now. So I think what makes it difficult is when you don't have like a lot of flexibility to make a really an automation that allows you to do so much in one, um, you know, the if, then, other kind of filter out things it makes you use more automations, which then in turn you run out of space because you only have 50, right? So now sometimes you're running an automation off of another one to kind of, um, I do it a lot with clients where I springboard an automation. Maybe I might assign it to someone, but if they were on leave, then I would temporarily assign it to someone else, but it would just be piggybacking off the parent one. Um, so yeah, I do hope so. But again, I would just reach out to your Asana forums and throw out all your ideas as you can, because that's going to be the only thing that gets us um, more flexibility with regards to that. Perfect. Well, we'll have Marky, one what are your more... thoughts on that? What are my thoughts? Um, do you hope so too? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I connect with product at Asana quite a bit and like these are things for me where I feel like they are low hanging fruit, right? Like we should be able to do true if then statements. And I think that's why we integrate with third party integrators like Zapier or Make to do a lot of the things that we can't do natively. Um, I, I think it's just a matter of time though, right? Like we see um, new features rolled out all the time. I think if we just are patient, um, we'll be surprised one day. They'll just drop it and like Asana does, they don't tell anyone about it and it's just like a big surprise. Um, so yeah, hopefully yeah. we'll see those in the future. You come in and everything's different. <laughs> you don't yeah. know how to use this new projects thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, we've got one more question here and then we'll, we'll close this session out. Um, Jacob asks, is there a way that custom field, sorry, is there a way that a custom field change in one project can trigger an automation in another project? Technically, yes. So when you have, so if you have a task that let's say is um, multi-homed, because this would be the only way that it would work. If a task lives on two projects, and let's say on one project, you say if this custom field is changed to done, move it to done. But then let's say on another project, that done kicks off a new set of a workflow, then you could also um, have it trigger that to kick off maybe some other uh, custom field for that particular board. So I do that a lot where I might have an automation that spans across two. 
boards. Maybe it's a, just a standard general one, but then maybe on a project board, I have a different automation. So once that automation gets triggered in a sense, you basically say, hey, when this gets marked done, I want you to change this status of this next phase to in progress. And then essentially it would do it that way. So that's one way to kind of do that. Um, but yeah, again, if it's multi-homes and you're trying to use one custom field automation, you move, you update it on one, wherever that task lives, if any automation meets that criteria, it's automatically going to trigger. That's a yeah. great question. That's perfect. Well said. Man, I wish we had more time. There's still so many more questions, but thank you so much, Nadia, um, for, for being here today and for sharing. Um, I'll, I'll leave it to you. Are there any closing remarks you want to leave the, the attendees with today? Uh, no, this was just so much fun. I hope you all learned something and I hope you all take the opportunity to play around with automations and don't allow them to scare you. Um, this is going to be one of the things that's really going to help your teams. And I harp on it a lot because it's important. So if you have any questions, need any guidance, find me on LinkedIn. I have no issues assisting with anything. Um, you know, just want to make sure we're all using Asana to the best of our ability. That's pretty much what today's about. Awesome. Thank you so Thanks, much. Matthew. And again, everyone, thank you for your engagement, for your, your questions. Um, we're moving into our very last session of the day. It's bittersweet, um, but we're going to be joined by Paul Miners um, in the next session talking about, or his topic, sorry, is shaping future teams, making Asana your primary communication tool. So head over there. We're going to wrap up the day with Paul, and then I'll have some closing remarks for everybody. But uh, again, thank you for attending. Thanks for your energy, and we'll see you in the next session. Bye for now.